So I had an idea for a project using some magnetic levitation to make sort of a moon landing 3D print diorama. Um, so I ordered a large magnetic levitation tool off Amazon and it finally arrived today. So I was doing a little playing around with it. It came in some pretty good packaging, which is good because this is a pretty, pretty hefty magnet. Uh, it came with the uh, top floating magnet piece. Uh, this is rated for 500 grams of weight. Uh, the magnet's very, very strong. So if you're not careful, this thing will be drawn to it. So it probably it can go right through my hand. And you can see already it just sticks very strong. So <laughs> do be careful uh, when you use these just because of how strong it is. Um, it comes with some tabs here as well. It has uh, some blue LEDs around the outside. Uh, these are all snap away tabs. Um, I would like to use these for this project to try and see how they look. Maybe if the blue LEDs can sort of make a cool light sphere of sorts around the rocket on the moon landing, it could be kind of cool. Uh, worst case, we could probably design something around them to cover it up if need be. Um, so let's plug this in and test it out, see how it works. It's got the little cable plug here. Oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's got some nice bright blue LEDs. That's kind of cool there. And let's see if the magnet works out. So the way that magnetic coils work is there'll be a sweet spot in the middle that this will work for the levitation. And you can see if you're not in the exact spot, it wants to fire off around the outside, but if you can find that nice spot in the middle, it is fairly easy. And there we go, that's pretty cool. So it kind of spins around and fit my hand right underneath that. Okay, very neat. So to make this rocket sort of moon landing design, I kind of want to model it off the original Apollo 11 style rocket. Um, we're going to be faced with some design constraints here for sure just in the sense that I want to surround this magnet base as sort of the moon surface. So this is going to be a design constraint as well on just the size of this, uh, as well as the magnet. This will be a consideration as well because if this is how small the base is going to be, maybe a little bit bigger, I might make it a larger diameter. Uh, we don't want the rocket to look too overwhelming over top of the moon and eat up a lot of the surface area. As well as if this is only rated for 500 grams, so we don't want to make the rocket too, too heavy because I would still like this to sit fairly high above the uh, the moon surface of sorts. And you can see if this has a little bit more weight on it, it does, it does go down a little bit. This is actually pretty cool to play with. It does go down a little bit. Um, so I want to keep this as high as possible um, and not have too much material below here for like the rocket exhaust as well as the moon surface because I do want to keep this space pretty high between the actual magnet and the coils. So right now I'd say it's about one and a half centimeters or so just because I can fit my my whole hand underneath that. So let's uh, jump over to some design software. We'll get some measurements of the magnetic parts and start modeling something in Fusion 360 to see what we can come up with. I started off by designing the surface of the moon that would cover the base of the magnet coil. I used a sketch I found online to develop the texture and surface of the moon. I then used a couple of different extruded heights and fillets to develop the craters and get the overall look and feel I wanted of the moon surface. I then started working on the main body of the rocket. This design portion took a bit of tinkering because I wanted to embed the magnet into the exhaust portion of the rocket and I wanted to use only 3D printed components with this because working with screws or fasteners would have thrown off the magnetic levitation device a bit. So I wanted to use 3D printed components also given the small design space we were working with. After I had that in place, I then worked on modeling the tip off the original Apollo 11 style rocket and then worked on the fins around the outside, making sure that everything was symmetrical about the rocket to have a good center of mass. After I had all the components complete, I loaded them into an animation assembly to make sure that everything would go together smoothly once they were all 3D printed and I could put them together properly. 
Performing assemblies like this in design software is really useful because it helps bring to light any design considerations you may have overlooked and it helps in the final assembly process. So with all the modeling now complete, let's start 3D printing and see how it looks. So we've got the moon base modeled. I used a glow-in-the-dark recycled pet G for this from Greengate 3D. Uh, they sent us some glow-in-the-dark material after uh, doing a collaboration on a recent project together. Um, so this will be a great place to test out some of this glow-in-the-dark because I think with a glow-in-the-dark moon surface will be really, really cool on this uh, this moon base. So I uh, used a top layer surface finish of the Hilbert Curves and the Prusa Slicer. So it gives it kind of a rougher moon-like finish without adding hours and hours of design time. Uh, I've got two little indexing points here that will snap nicely onto the actual base, hopefully. If I can actually index this properly. So that actually snaps on there quite well and it's pretty tight. So even turning upside down, it sits in there pretty well. So it's a nice press fit. But the actual test is how it fits with the magnet in. So let's put this in here. That's a pretty good fit. And let's wind this to put the cord inside a little bit. And I've got here a small little index slot that the cord can be put into. So let's put that in there and tighten it up. There we go. So that's nice and flush with the surface of the uh, moon perimeter there. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's make sure that cord is secured down and let's put this surface back on. That looks pretty good. Uh, so we can still see uh, some of these coils at the top as well. Um, that's not the end of the world because I know that the rocket's going to sit on top of here. Um, it'll probably cover up that from any angle of view. Um, this may need to be a little bit thicker just because it does look a little dark and I'm worried about how that's going to look with the glow-in-the-dark filament. Um, and I do want to see this with the lights on, so let's test that out with the magnet lights and see how it looks. That's pretty cool. So it's got a nice little ring around here. It might be too bright and it might take away from the actual um, glow-in-the-dark film in itself. We can design some things, so sort of a little cover or something to slide over top of these parts. We may have to redesign the base of this as well, but I think as it is right now, I think it does look pretty cool. Okay, so we've also got the rocket pieces printed off here, and I have the fins as well. So we'll see how these in here. So we've got the 
magnet piece. So this is the exhaust of the rocket. I designed this so that the lower seat of the magnet has a bit of a protrusion here. It can sit in the base of this rocket exhaust and then hopefully it'll sit nice and snugly in there. Well, that's, that's a perfect fit. So you can see how it secures in and indexes itself in the back. Uh, I also designed these little clips. So this is in a pet G. So I designed these so they're, so they're a little bit of a press fit. So you can pinch them together and they will go into the bottom of the rocket here and they will index themselves and hopefully be a nice press fit because I don't want to lock this magnet exactly in place um, because I do think I'd like to use it for another project in the future. Um, this is actually pretty cool and I'd like to use it for a couple more things. So let's see how this fits on the actual rocket. And that's actually another nice, a nice snug tolerance fit. And yeah, that's, that's locked in there pretty good. The magnet's pretty heavy and I'm shaking it and it's on there pretty good. Uh, I want to make sure we can also remove it as well. Oh, it comes off pretty nicely also. Okay, excellent. So I'm happy with that part of the design. I think that's pretty good. So let's put this let's put this back on. You heard that nice clip in there. And let's get the rocket fins indexed as well. I made these so they're also just a press fit. So I like to design things for 3D printing without a whole lot of glue. Um, I will design some things with glue, but I like to design it with not a whole lot of external parts that need to be purchased. I like to 3D print most of them. So these all, these are all actually snapping in pretty nicely as well. Okay. So here we've got the, the rocket. This looks pretty pretty good. So I did model off the Apollo 11 style rocket. Um, obviously this isn't exact. It's a little obviously shorter and a little wider than the actual Apollo 11 would be. Uh, a lot of that was to do with, uh, I wanted to make sure that the center of mass was very low on this because I didn't want a tipping point on the magnet so that if this is rotating, I didn't want to have it sort of off center or off balance. Um, Luckily this magnet's pretty heavy, so the center of mass with this will stay fairly low. Um, and a lot of the weight does come from these uh, fin attachment points and the whole rocket here, as you saw on the under view, was all hollow. So the only part that's solid on here is just the little, little tip on the rocket as I pull the magnet towards myself there. So yeah, let's see how this floats on the magnet here. So yeah, this, uh, this rocket looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with, uh, with how this looks. So it's got a pretty cool look in the dark as well. Uh, it lights up pretty significant lower portion of the rocket. I think it looks really cool with that blue light. Uh, it does take away from the glow in the dark sort of alien effect that I was looking for. Um, but I think we can design something to cover up those lights and sort of make this a multi-purpose design to see how we can get that uh, nice glow-in-the-dark filament to shine on here as well. So I've got the new base in here. Uh, everything fits pretty well. It's got all the pegs on the outside. I think that's pretty solid. So I also reprinted the moon base, I doubled up the thickness of it so you can't really see through it that well. Um, hopefully it'll help it glow a little bit better as well. Um, so let's try this on here. And that's even better than the first one. And yeah, you can definitely, it definitely hides a lot of that top surface. I think this looks a lot nicer and definitely feels a lot sturdier as well. So we can see that with the blue lights blocked off, the green filament gives a much nicer glow-in-the-dark look than it did before. Uh, it shines very nicely onto the bottom of the rocket. Maybe not as much light as the LEDs do show, but I think overall this adds a really nice feature to this design as well and very happy with the filament. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this project be made. I really enjoyed making it as well. 
I'll leave the link in the description to the download for the STL file as well as the links for the magnet coils and the recycled glow-in-the-dark filament. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out this channel a lot. So thanks again for watching, and as always, happy printing.